water's boiling. We're gonna get this is another thing that you have to get. Because these are gonna be boiling, boiling hot. Okay. Um this is the only way to pick up a, a hot jar. Now you can try your tongs, but you will not drop a jar with these. And I mean, these are like four bucks. So, you know, go ahead and get them. All right, we're going to pick our jar up. Put them in our, move my camera, you can't see. There we go. Now you want to make sure you've got one inch of water over your jar. Okay. Now, don't fill your pot up because, as you know, mass displaces uh, space. So, you know, put, put as much as you dare to put in it and then put your jars in and you can always add more, which is what I'm going to do right now because I'm just a tad short. Like I said, about an inch of water over. Put it back on it. I'm not going to win. Sometimes, just so you know, I have this bag of rice. Okay. And I have another pan that the lid sometimes jiggles and moves. And I just lay this bag of rice on it and it keeps it still. But I don't think we're going to need it with this pan. Okay, so I'm good. I'm on high. What we're going to do is let that come back to a boil. Now, you don't start timing your process until you've reached a rolling boil. A rolling boil is a boil that is fast and you cannot stir it down. And of course you can't stir that, but you, you, know, you know what I'm saying. It's really boiling. Then you start your 15 minute timer. I will see you then. Okay, so our 15 minutes is up and we're gonna take our jars out of the pot. We're also going to check our, uh, I checked the lines just a few minutes ago. They were still kind of rubbery feeling. Yeah, and they, and they still are, so... I'm just going to leave them for however long they need to be. I have some dried ones already for the next step that I want to show you anyway, so whatever. All right. Let me get moved around here so you can have a gander. Here's our jars, and I'm going to sit here and talk to you a little bit, and maybe we'll hear some ping. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. Uh... They're not boiling, and that's fine. They don't have to be. Um, and actually, I take that back. They are just, just a little bit. And there's probably no way for me to have you see that. I always say when you're canning, it should come like when you're, when you're canning in the uh, pressure cooker and you're doing soup, tomatoes, or veggies. If you have been on my page before, my Facebook page, I actually have a video on there of corn that I canned and I took it out of the pressure cooker and it is boiling. That, you know it's good. You know, you know it's been processed long enough. If it is not boiling, may not be processed long enough. And if it's not been processed long enough, it, if it doesn't fail, Within the first 24, I guarantee it's going to fail eventually. I actually had some green beans fail on me. Oh, goodness. 
four days after I canned it, which is how I know how stuff smells after it fails. Anyway, uh, I was kind of hoping we would hear a pop or a ping. We are not. Uh, so I won't bore you with uh, sitting here waiting for it to ping. I think what I'll do is gather the rinds that I do have um, already prepared and I'll show you how we're going to make that uh, zest powder that I worked so hard to get today. Okay, we're back. I have my coffee grinder. It's an electric coffee grinder. Don't have to use a coffee grinder. If you've got a food processor, this will work just fine. I actually have a hand crank grinder. It does a coarse grind. At least I used two years ago and I boxed it up because I didn't care. And now I desperately wish I could find it because I'm not having any luck finding a new one. Anyway, my daughter, prepper kid number one, was kind enough to give this to me uh, to grind coffee, which I did a couple of times, but I'm not a grind my own coffee kind of gal. Whatever. Um, anyhow, I cleaned it out really well, got as much of the coffee out of it as I could, which was pretty much, I mean, it's 98% clean. There's no coffee in it. I did, you know, I, and she's a big flavored coffee drinker, so what I smell is vanilla. But that's it. I mean, it's fine. It, I think it'll be good. Now, will I use it for coffee after this? Yeah, it probably will flavor the first. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, but that pop was a jar. Um, it'll probably flavor the first few pots I were to grind in it, whatever I ground in it last. Um, but I think I'm going to dedicate this now to my herbs and um, things like this. So you'll be seeing this again later this spring when we start foraging for um, herbs and uh plants and drying things um, so we can stock our spice cabinet from our yard. Okay, so I have my very super dry, snappy, see that snappy snap, orange peelings because my limes just aren't quite dry enough yet. So we stick them in our grinder and like I said, you can probably even use a blender I have ground things in my blender before, so, you know, and you may have a few big pieces. I mean, you know, it, whatever. I mean, if you wanted store-bought, you'd get store-bought. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I, I personally do not have to have things perfect. Anyway, now we're going to grind it. You hear the the big pieces, so I'm gonna kind of just do it until I don't hear that anymore. Okay, and I think what you're supposed to do. we go and it is definitely orangey and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give it a taste just about this bitter taste I've read about you know I tell you what, if you mix a little sugar in that it would like be that candy orange crap that you feed your grandkids and then send them home but there you go I'm trying it. Not too shabby. Now, one orange gives you about a tablespoon of powder, depending on, of course, the size of your orange. Um, my guess is the lime probably be two limes, two to three limes will give you. Um, but whenever you're flavoring 
foods with, with zest like this, it usually doesn't take very much. Surprisingly, it will really flavor. And I mean, I can, I can now, uh, later this spring, like I talked to you about foraging for plants, um, I plan on making teas. Uh, and this will be a great addition if I want to make some orange tea. Um, the limes will will be useful then as well. Um, and, and this is dry and this is powder and I can now, I have the perfect jar. Hang on. At least for this. I save. <laughs> Nothing goes to waste at Nana's house. I save my yeast jars and I just soak the, the, um, the label off of it. It's a dark jar so that it blocks any light and uh, I will just store it in this jar and it will be there at my disposal um, for whatever I want to use it for, be it tea, be it to maybe flavor a, a drink or, or, or a, um, a, you know, sprinkle it on a pie, sprinkle it on ice cream. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I can think of, I can just go on with ideas on what I can do with this stuff. And it's, you know, when you buy lemon zest, which is the only kind of zest I've ever bought at the store, not horribly expensive, but it's not one of the cheaper things that you can buy. So if I'm going to buy oranges that are on sale anyway so that we can eat them and my kids can eat them, why not expand on their use? I mean, there's just no reason not to. None. So anyway, um, I hope you learned something again today. I did. I learned that limes suck if you have to peel them. Uh, I hope you're enjoying these videos. I'm kind of getting used to making them. Kind of still learning the editing process. You know, trying to keep Papa out of the kitchen while I'm videotaping. Um, but anyway, I hope you're enjoying them. I hope you like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Oh, did you hear another pop? I just heard another pop.